welcome to the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. We have a special little aftermarket report tonight. Today's date is June the 4th, 2019, and we have five tickers we're going to spit out to you. Miss Vegas is going to give us our call list. Okay. Well, everyone, hope you had a good trading day because you know what? Today was what they call turn around Tuesday and things did turn around. So we're going to talk about Netflix, AMD, Tesla, APPS, and Rwalk, Rewalk News After Hours. So let's start. So on Netflix, I do want to mention about Netflix because, you know, people are wondering like what's happening with Netflix and, uh, you know, what's the scoop there? Why did it even pull back yesterday? So, you know, listen, you have to understand the market, you know, the last little while has had the pullback. But, you know, Netflix is one of those stocks that really it's a technology stock, right? Like if you think about it, it's, you know, you watch the movies on your laptop, iPad, you know, all through Wi-Fi. So you are using, you know, it has nothing to do with import and exporting of tariffs, um, you know, but basically there was a sell off. Uh, yesterday in the tech sector and this had a, a pullback but you know Netflix really just does not fall into a trade uh, such trade war situation at all and so the stock should actually be in good shape and so as a result of you know us thinking that way uh, we looked at the chart today and we actually took some Netflix option calls and I'm glad we did um, so we looked at Netflix and kind of looking to take this actual stock uh, back towards the uh, 360s, then 370s, and 380. But I'd love to see it eventually get to 380 longer term. Uh, so what we did is we actually bought the option calls today on uh, Netflix at the 360 strike. Now, the reason we didn't take the one lower, I mean, to be honest, I would have loved to have grabbed the ones for 350, but those were just too expensive. So we did a great job. We grabbed these ones. Uh, this morning, right at the open, we grabbed these ones for 76 and 77 and 78 cents. So people got filled on those. Uh, we closed uh, pretty nicely on Netflix uh, today and uh, looking for a continuation tomorrow. I uh, saw a lot of block trades in there. So I saw the fat cats loading up on this pullback. Um, the option trade went as high as 235. So even if you don't like to swing trade, because I know some people don't like swing trading, um, you could have day traded this. You know, you would have paid 75 to 77 cents. So $77, turned it into even $200. Uh, you would have made a very nice profit over 100%. You know, this is a 200% trade today on a tiny investment. So I am still in my Netflix call. I have the 360 strike. I also have the ones for 370 those ones we paid 36 cents they're now 50 cents so we're up on those 14 dollars a contract so in total so far we're up on the other one the one that was 76 cents for the two uh for the 360 strike we're up on that one 151 dollars per contract so imagine that's really good money okay so hopefully we'll see a continuation tomorrow again uh, nothing this has nothing to do with what's going on there um, so Jim, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the chart and, uh, then we'll talk about AMD next, but let's hear about Netflix chart. Yeah, they got, it looks to me like they got an upcoming event here on June 6th, uh, shareholders meeting, annual share meeting of the shareholders. So that's kind of interesting. That's on June 6th. That's two more days out. And then Miss Vegas, I pointed out the, uh, the option call there. On, you were talking about June seventh. Yes, yeah. the one that expired Friday. Yeah. So there's the option call right there. It's sitting right at two thirty right now. Mm -hmm. well, what I like about the chart is that, you know, if I pull up the yearly, as I look at the yearly, we pulled down to the two hundred EMA two days in or, or yesterday, and yesterday, you know, I had to get filling you. Every trader that's been around and trading for a while, they get these little feelings in their gut, how the market is. It's kind of being in the now. But when we pulled back yesterday, everything kind of sold off real hard yesterday. Facebook, which Vegas made a great call on Facebook, pulled back. 
and the same thing happened here with Netflix. It pulled back. It did have a high last month up here right around 384.48. And that was a resistance double top we had to break out. We did have a higher high back here around 423 at the beginning of the 52-week uh, year. So it did bounce up. We did get a little, uh, we got a real nice bounce up from it. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day and let you look at it. You can see where we pulled back. We were down here a couple weeks ago at resistance level, support level, right around the 340, 336, 340, 342, 343. And we went below that yesterday, real, real hard sell off from a high on the 20 day chart of 381. So here we are at 354. I think this thing can run up more. Pretty sure of it that we can run up past 360. In this little channel right here with that high, the pivot point, I'm going to probably post it right here, right around the 352, and we broke that, that little support level right there, 352.20. And so we got three little more resistances that we got to take it up to. That's going to be the 357.59, 360.35, and 363.89. And I do believe we will see that 363.89 probably here within a week or into next week. And the fact that they're having the annual shareholders meeting might be a big boost to bring this back up to 363.89. And then remember, just the 20 day high was 381.35. If it does decide to pull back, you've got a low support, and I'm going to call it right here, right around, and I still don't think it's going to pull back any. But if it does, 346.20 right here, and then another one right here, right around the 350 area. For right now, we're at 354 after hours. It did close at 353.40. This is Netflix. You're welcome to pause this video at any time. Hold this chart for your own personal resistance. But while we got a break, by the end of the next two weeks, it's going to be this 363.89. And I think that'll do that real easy. The next one we're going to talk about is another one that we talk about quite a bit. We've been bullish on it for more than a year now. And we call this way under 10 bucks, and this is called AMD. Yes, and you know, AMD, I was really annoyed with it uh, last week because I was really hoping and expecting that the stock was going to go to like $30, $31. And you know what? It had a pullback, and I was like, what is going on? This, is no this trade plan's just not working. So... You know what we had to do yesterday? We had to actually get, we had calls in the morning. We didn't make much money on those calls. We got out of them uh, for a little, very little green. But then we actually said, let's go take, let's go short AMD and let's get the puts because that stock was getting shorted. So you know what? We bought the puts yesterday and those ones went over 100%. And that was yesterday. But today, a positive sign for AMD. This finally closed above the resistance today. So you know what? Can this go up into my $30 target? I think it's going to get ready to set up. So I like AMD longer term hold as well. Um, but, um, you know, uh, you got to watch this one. But AMD calls worked beautifully. We had those alerted today. We got those at 55 cents. They went all the way to 85. So nice $30 gain per contract. I mean, that is amazing return on such a, you know, small account. And, um, you know, people are holding on to the actual trade because the call expires on Friday, June 7. So because it had a strong close, uh, some of us decided to hold the option call into tomorrow. So they're going to hold the calls and we'll see what tomorrow looks like. But I'm thinking AMD's ready to go uh, towards 30 bucks next. And I'll let Jim talk about that beautiful chart so far looking nice today. Yeah, I think the big catalyst on this AMD right now, and usually I, I hit a certain place where I say it's a hard resistance, and that's been at $83, 23, $28, excuse me. But yesterday's news that came out, it was the high performance AMD Radeon GPUs to power up the new Mac Pros for Apple. It was, to me, real a new catalyst to bring the stock up to the $30 target that missed. Vegas is talking about and I think also it'll actually go up higher than that here on here on out throughout the year and 
just to me it's a very bullish catalyst for it to start to move up a little higher have a new trend we've been in the channel for a long period of time between the twenty six dollars and the twenty eight with a little bit of breakout and then pullbacks and here in the last week and a half we have had a real nice couple few break, three breakouts with pullbacks I always expect this stock to pull back a little bit and I'm gonna raise that twenty eight dollars now where I thought was a pretty easy uh, resistance level up to 28.50 and I'm going to call that 28.50 as a new support a new pivot point anything below that's going to be a strong buy anything above that's going to be uh, going to be a gift and we today we broke the double top on a 20 day or we hit it and that's right here around 29.54 so I'm going to tell you I think I'm going to leave the same trend lines I'm not going to touch this I think it will pull back to maybe that 2850 and if it does it'll go in no lower than the 2833 and that's going to be a strong buy 2850 is going to be your little pivot point area between the, the old channel that it was in and the new channel it's going to create but we got to break this resistance of 2950 and bring it up and she has called this out at 30 bucks before and we have just barely touched it a few times and it's pulled back but I think here in the next upcoming month or so, we are going to break that 30 and get up to and create a brand new channel from the 2850 on up. And this is going to be AMD. We got to break the double top right here, and I'm going to add a new one. It's going to be 28955. Excuse me to bring it up to the 30. And I do believe we're going to create a new channel from the 2850 area, and maybe just a little bit lower, maybe 2836. But it's gonna, that's going to be your low support. I don't think it's going to start going any lower than that. If it does, it'll be a strong buy. I just I was calling a strong buy down here at 27.14 to 27.25. And we went way below that down here in this area down here, which was very strong buys. So let's, let's see if we can get this to break the double top at 28.50, 28.55, and start creating a new channel. That's how I see this trade going. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Tesla. Oh, my gosh. So, Tesla, you know, this one was being bashed nonstop. I mean, we already know uh, one of the analysts, think about Morgan Stanley, bashed this thing, saying it's going to 10 bucks, And, uh, you know, <laughs> all, kinds of, all kinds of bashers on the stock. And you know what? You don't blame them. I mean, I hear what they're – I hear, you know, they're saying $10. Tesla's losing money. Tesla's losing money. They're not profitable. Anyways, the bottom line's this. Tesla's had, you know, got it, it, you, sometimes it doesn't matter what you are hearing. You have to focus on, uh, you know, you could take it with a grain of salt, but you got to focus on what are you seeing on the tape? What are you seeing on the chart? Because the action lies in the tape. you got to just cut the noise. And I don't know how many people sometimes listen to too much stuff and they're basing their trades on, oh, I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. And then, you know what? They're like, oh, my God, I missed a run. It ran to 10 bucks. It's like, well, that's what happened with Tesla today, right? The stock uh, was as low as 184.75, went as high as 194.40. I mean, are we kidding? Um, there was some tweets earlier today also uh, from Elon Musk about, um, I'll, I'll find them in a second. But, you know, I just want to give an example. You know, like earlier today, the stock was at 8, like in the morning, even if somebody would have looked at this and said, oh, you know what, I'm going to look at the calls. Uh, you know, I'll take a, a long shot. You know, this stock could go to 190 today. Well, let me just tell you an example of how these options can make you so much money if you find the right setup and the right opportunity. So Tesla this morning looked like it was starting to reverse here. And uh, Jim will talk more about the chart in a second. But, you know, the option calls, if you were to look to buy an option call at $190 strike, so you're anticipating that the stock's going to go to 190 or more, that option call was a dollar and fifteen cents this morning. Uh, sorry, it was a one forty one this morning. Uh, pulled back and went as low as one fifteen, but look where it is now. It went all the way to seven hundred and ten dollars a contract. So your so investment of a hundred and hundred and forty bucks would have turned it into seven hundred bucks now. So this is just crazy on Tesla, the one ninety strike that expires Friday. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk to us about the chart. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, you know, if you go on social media, I mean, a lot of people I know follow Elon Musk. I mean, I, I like to read his feed because he's entertaining. Um, but you know what? They have a supercharger now. 
Um, they have, uh, I think they have the new, um, uh, the new model. They said they're giving the Model S and Model X cars now come with unlimited free supercharging. So you don't even have to pay for it. The offer ends at the end of June. Uh, you know, people say, I guess you don't really know what it's like to drive a Tesla till you have a Tesla. So, hey, listen, I don't have a Tesla, so I can't speak for it. I do have a cousin of mine who has a Tesla SUV and she's a dentist and she works about an hour and 20 minutes away from her home and uh, she's got a big dental practice and uh, she told me that she used to spend six to seven hundred a month in gas and she bought the Tesla SUV and she swears by this. She loves it. She said she charges it and um, she's got the, the electric vehicle one. And she said that her savings is just phenomenal and she just swears by this. Thing. So I should actually ask her, uh, let me drive it for a couple of days and switch cars with her to really see if, what it's like. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'd love to hear. If any of you watch YouTube and have a Tesla, please comment below in the video uh, your experience because I'd love to know more about the car. Anyways, Jim, let's hear more about the chart. Yeah, I got one request. Any of you guys listen to this video want to buy me this Roadster? I feel fine with that. I'm not sure would. I would really love that. So um, another thing is, I was pulling up this platform that I use for option trading. It's called Tastyworks. I'm not paid to show this or anything like this, but I have found it kind of easy to use the platform, and that's what I've been showing these option trades with. So I'm not getting no promotion out of this or nothing. I just wanted to bring that up. Now the chart on Tesla did call bottom on it yesterday. I called bottom on everything yesterday because I thought it was an overreaction on a lot of these big tickers. And I also want to mention that I don't let these analysts, these fat cats up on Wall Street, influence my trade. I usually do just the opposite of how they talk and how they think. And when they said $10 a share on Tesla, I had to almost laugh, and I, I did laugh. I said, that, that's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. If it went down at all, it'd be a 140 low support. But yesterday, we hit that 176, and I felt pretty good about that, 177. And today, you can see the rebound on it. It ran up all the way to 194.52 after hours. It hit my little resistance line that I had on here already. And I have three more that we're going to go to, but what we got to do is break that $200 mark, 199.36. And we do have another one right here at 196.32. It's got to go above that. And then we have a little pivot point uh, after the sell off at 204.95. And the last time I called this, it ran all the way up to 250 right here. And then ever since then, we've had a 20 day pullback. So I've been very bullish on this stock ever since the IPO came out at fifty some dollars, and it ran all the way up to almost four hundred, and now it's kind of pulled back to two hundred, you know, about a little over a hundred percent, one seventy six forty nine. It did pull back more than a hundred percent, so I'm pretty pleased with that for to start creating new resistances as it goes up. So the next movement we got to do is hit this. Let me pull up the year's chart real fast. You can see where we were. We had a triple top up here, almost a triple top at 376.38. It sold off most of the year. We had that bad December where it had that hard sell off and it bounced back, but we have a beautiful little chart right here. We broke the pivot, the low support at 251, 250, and we're down here at 177. And I feel like that's a good enough sell off for it to retrace back up. And start filling some of these gaps up here and maybe even eventually hit 210 again but it, it'll be fine if it doesn't get back up to these peaks but I do believe we did hit a bottom and if we ever see ten dollars on this thing I'll stop trading and I don't know how that's gonna <laughs> happen wow that means you will never that'll never happen yep so we've got the next one we're going to talk about it's one that we've mentioned on many aftermarket reports and that's APPS Yes, yeah, so APPS, you guys know, this is the um, My Digital Turbine. They're the ones that make all these apps, right? Um, and I did say that this is a company to watch because they have a lot of good action. And so this company is in Texas. And you know what? Listen, 
The revenue was $103.6 million, 39% annual growth. I mean, the gross margin expansion and leverage continue to drive the improved profitability. I mean, the revenue for the fourth quarter was 27.2, which is a 30% growth. Um, they just a great company. I mean, the company has surpassed 260 million total devices that have, you know, uh, downloaded their apps. Um, and again, apparently more than 29 million uh, devices installed in the March quarter. So this company, um, by the way, I, this is really important, okay, because I've talked about how I really like this company long term, but let me add this part. This company has ended the fiscal 2019 with a cash balance of $10.9 million and zero total debt, okay? This is following the conversion of all convertible notes that were previously outstanding and also full repayment of short-term debt. The company is debt-free. This is important. And cash, I mean, company needs cash to function, right? So this is really good. Um, I think that uh, they're going to have a very strong year. And um, they're also very excited that the balance sheet actually uh, has almost basically $11 million cash and zero debt. So they definitely are going to be a company to watch. So for those of you that like stocks that are under the $5 and maybe hold for longer term, this could be something you check and do your own due diligence on and see if you like something like this for your portfolio. But I really like this company because of those reasons. I love that their website, I love what they're into. Everyone needs an app. All these companies are always wanting new apps. And this is a, a company that does all these things. So um, I think they're doing great. I think they have a very good, strong baseline. Um, the advertisers are demanding the product for their platform. And that just speaks for itself. I mean, they got customers knocking at the door. I mean, they're not, it's not like they're going out there trying to find customers. They are, but they got customers that know of them and are calling them for business. So that's an excellent sign of a company. So you know what? I think uh, this is great. Uh, the conversion engagement that's also been happening uh, has provided um, good value for both uh, end users and customers. And I think this is really good to see uh, from this company. So I want to say congratulations to people that might have the stock or holding the stock long term. Good for you. And congratulations to this leadership team. You know what? This company's got their shit together. Jim, over to you. Whoa. Uh, yeah. I was just showing some of the revenue here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Amazing. They got Cricket, AT&T, Umber. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Twitter, I mean, Facebook just really looks nice. Domino's, Target. All state just keeps going on and on and on. So we've been calling this out for quite a while now, and it just keeps creating newer highs. We had to break a double top, 52-week high, and that's right here around 409 is where I'm going to – well, I could probably pull it back a little bit, but I'm going to call that 409, the double top area. And it did pull back to a support today. I mean, th last week, down here at around 362. We had that big sell-off yesterday, and then bam, today we created a new 52-week high. I called this up off in the room, and I posted it even on stock twits, the 52-week uh, high, and all the 52-week highs we hit today alone. So we've got to see if, I mean, it, it can't pull back, and there's no, there's no three-year on this. We're at a three-year high. We're at a 52-week high. So we're going to look at this as maybe a pullback play. And you see, I'm going to probably put the low support right down here, right around the 418 level. That's where I'm going to put that low support. Then I'm going to make the first support, maybe the second support right here at 422. And then the first support is going to be right here at the 429 area. That's going to be your first one. I think it can pull back to that 422. I don't want to see it go down here back to the old 52-week double top high we had. And I'm going to just, well, I'm going to leave it at 409, but it could be 410, 411, somewhere right around there. You see what I'm talking about here at 410? So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in there. I'm going to put me in a little blue line. And that's going to be low, 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 low support that we're going to try to hit. I mean, not try to hit, but if it does hit it, it'll be a strong buy. 
and that's going to be right down there at the 409, 410 area. First channel of support is going to be, second channel of support is going to be right here at 418 to 421, and we don't want it to go no lower than 429. It can, it can, you know how the market reacts, but I guarantee it'll pop right back up. I'm very pleased on this double bottom call here, right around 366, and all it's done from last night at close, it broke down. I mean, it broke, had to break down yesterday at that double bottom, and then it bounced all the way up and created new highs today. This is a really beautiful chart, really beautiful 24 hours right here. You can see them engulfing candles. Had two major engulfing candles, and the wicks didn't really surprise me that much. I mean, not a very big pullback on them on them little wicks. So we got a 418 first support, low support, 409 to 410. Second. 418 to 422 and then we've got the 429 and we got a resistance breakout that we got to meet right now I'm going to call it right here at 435 that's where we got to have the resistance breakout let me put that on there before we we got one more talk, stock we're going to talk about and it's one that had some great news but here you are at the 435 and that's going to be our resistance for the 52 week high and the next one we're going to talk about is something that we've talked about for a couple years now. I do like this company, but they did have some trouble, some issues with the stock price. It did pull back. They had a split. And today it, it got great news. And Miss Vegas, won't you introduce it? Yeah, so I just want to talk about Rewalk. I mean, listen, this company, uh, this is near and dear to my heart actually a little bit because, you know, um, this is Israeli ticker. And the reason I'm, you know, I feel for this com the stock and the, and the founder, you know, I got to tell you, this founder, I met him in person. I went to Israel a couple years ago. And uh, when I was there at the institutes there, the Technology Institute, uh, the founder was there. And, uh, you know, he unfortunately is a paraplegic, but he unfortunately can't use the product himself. However, he was determined to actually have a product out there that can help people uh, walk again or feel like they can walk. I mean, you know, it is hard to, you know, if you're if you're confined to a wheelchair, um, it is difficult to, to be seated on, right, you know, hours and hours a day. And it's such an amazing story to come up with this exoskeleton suit. And I have met, I met this one gentleman who actually told the story how he actually had an accident where he he was at a construction site a uh, very nice man from the US and uh, he fell off at the construction site and he actually um, broke his neck and uh, he became uh, paralyzed and uh, he actually is a user of the exoskeleton suit and let me tell you it was a challenge but um, he's not able to do it for hours and hours but he has the pleasure to try on the suit and stand up and feel like he can walk a little bit and actually interact with his children. So this is life changing and uh, very near and dear to my heart. I'm very loving this news. So the news today was that the FDA has issued clearance for the exo suit, which is the first soft robotic system for stroke therapy. So what's, uh, what they've done is the FDA has cleared the company for sale. They can actually sell the suit now to rehab centers across the United States. It is the only soft exo suit with FDA clearance, and it's intended for the use in the treatment of stroke survivors with mobility challenges. And as we know, strokes are a leading cause of disability, which affects over 17 million people. As many as 80% of people who have a stroke sometime will have suffering some obviously some medical impairments so this is not a cheap suit i want to let you know this is twenty eight thousand nine hundred dollars for the suit uh it's also available to be leased as well um people can lease it and um you know what they are looking to have reimbursement codes available as well um and they're i think they're working with um also, i think also the insurance companies so people that have, let's say, benefits um, can get some sort of subsidization. But I got to tell you, I think this suit should be free and paid for by the government. I mean, 
people need this or at least offer a substantial, some sort of substantial discount. I mean, this is just, you know, give people their life back. You know, if I can walk for an hour a day or even 20 minutes a day throughout the day, um, this is amazing. So this patent for the suit, just so you know, was originally developed at Harvard University at the Wise Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering. It went under clinical testing and it did prove in, uh, that the walking could improve for stroke survivors. And then they went into a research collaboration agreement back in 2016. So you know what? This has taken three years to finally make it here. But I got to tell you, this is exciting. So I'm happy to see uh, the stock doing well based on the news. And I really hope that people that need this can get this and that there's going to be some sort of financial, uh, even if they give some sort of tax credit to people that need this, I think this is a must have. If this is something that can improve your life, why not? Jim, over to you on that chart because it's a, ripping after hours here. I've even got a better idea. Instead of getting the government involved, I'm going to yeah, make a challenge. I want to make a challenge to all you people that have done well in Wall Street. And I know all you, most of you probably know somebody that's a paralegic. We, we have a few in our room. I know a couple others personally. If you got that extra money, Grab them one of these suits. They're only twenty-five grand. If you got a million dollars, that ain't gonna hurt you one bit. You can make that back up the next day of trading. So I'm gonna. Well, you know what? They could, they could. They could. They could. You know, set up a charitable organization oh, yeah. where uh, someone someone could apply and get some sort of um, sponsorship. So that's a great challenge. Yeah. So thank you for that idea, and let's talk about this chart because you know what. This is a low float too, I think. Let's oh, see yeah. what the float is. What is the float? Well, they had that I have split. here a low float, 4.5 million shares after, as of May the 8th. Well, we just created a new high here at 897. That's what my next resistance on this baby is. On the on the 20 day chart, I charted this up on a yearly. So I'm gonna pull up the year right now. If we can get mm -hmm. this thing up to 10 bucks, we're gonna break some new levels. The 1009 is what I got for the next $10 high, and you're going to have new buyers come in here, and this can run up to 11. It could even run up to a little higher than that if the momentum picks up. What did you say that flow was again? Uh, 4.5. So this is going to be a low floater for you guys that like to play low float stocks. This is great news. We could run this probably up to 1352 pretty easily. So I'm going to give you the pullbacks. I called the pullback a little bit after hours in our chat room and I'm going to pull up the 20 day first but that ain't going to tell you much so I'm going to go pull up three minute you did pull back here to 616 I did call a 581 I don't know I think it might have hit that but it might it might not have yeah I think it did pull oh excuse me 556 was the low support on this thing but I'm going to run it up with the 34 EMA and I'm going to add that right there, right around for right now. So I'm going to create a couple new 640. We've got a six, a 730, eight bucks. It can pull back pretty easily to that eight bucks. And I'm going to put another one right here at 771. So I keep adding these trend lines as we go throughout the day and after hours right now. But this is a huge spike all the way from 334 all the way to a double top area up here right around the 887. And we did create a new high just as I speak. This is on a three minute chart of 899. So it's gonna kinda of hard to give you your support levels, but I'm gonna say low support at 640 if it gets oversold. 730 is gonna be your second support. And then maybe right around here, your first support areas is gonna be right around 771 to 798 with a resistance breakout. And we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and stick with set 897 nine dollars is going to be your resistance breakout for tomorrow if it don't decide to do that tonight this is big news this is a stock that i do like and a company that i do like so let's see what the other resistances are going to be i need to pull up the one year again we're going to have three of them the 1009 1092 and then we got another one right here at 12 12.58, 
and then a resistance high of 1352 and we can go a lot higher with it if the momentum picks up but the pullback support is going to be right here right around the 887 where we had the previous highs right here right around that 866 and I'm going to pull up three, the three month see if I can get a better look at that 866 and I'm going to turn that into a red line that, I don't want to see it go no lower than at 866 if it does it's going to be a strong buy can you give me those uh, supports again the low the low support let me go to the 20 day here okay so give me those numbers Three minutes. I said 866. How'd I come up with that? That's going to be the the resistance. Once we break the resistance, that's going to be that 866. Uh -huh. So your low support is going to be right around 640. Uh -huh. um, 730 for your second support, and then your 640. First, um, 640 your for your low. Yeah. 730 for your second. Yeah. And then 771 to 798 is going to be your first support. 771 to 798. Then the resistance we got to break is going to be the $9. Okay. And then it's going to go up. If it breaks the $9, we're going to go to 10, 1092. And then 1258, and then we'll recess it after that. And we're right now at the 899. We just broke the resistance of $9. Yeah. So we might see $10, and if it hits the $10, the new buyers will come in. Yeah. And this is very bullish. Yeah. We're very bullish on this trade. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to put the time in sales up here and just watch it keep going. 923. Yeah. So, looks, yeah, we're going to really see 10. 10 is going to be a judgment day. Mm hmm. Well, and I want to say and before we go, we're almost done. We're wrapping up. I just want to say something. One last thing. Yeah. I got to say thank you to my friends at the Trade Exchange. And I'm gonna put their link in the video. Trade Exchange, and I'm gonna do a special video for these guys next week. These guys, I don't care what anyone says, because I've never used a new service. I've, I've used, I shouldn't say I haven't used one. I used one before, but not like this, okay? This Trade Exchange, it's not just news. They give me block trades. They give me unusual options. They give me a voice alert. And I got to tell you, I when you're trading, you guys know you can't stare at the screen all day. You're busy. So the fact that they offer voice alerts, and it's not done by a robot, by the way. It's done by a real person that's monitoring the markets. These guys are all former Wall Street guys. And they formed this platform called Trade Exchange. And um, this service that they give just pays for itself. If you're interested in checking it out, go to our website. Jim could show you the partnership page, Jim, Yeah. on, the, on our website. You can go there. You can use code Vegas. You can try it for $9.99 for one month. And if you like it, you can then subscribe monthly. They charge $44.99, and I think you would get another discount. But you know what? Forget about the, the price. The, this, this just pays for itself, okay? I have made... And the room, not just me, but even the room, because I can't take every trade that's out there, okay? I can't, and that's not realistic. But so many people in the room and even on social media have thanked me for posting news. And I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not looking at all these news feeds. I'm getting the information from Trade Exchange team, and I try to post it in real time to help people. And I've had so many people thanking me that thanks to your news, I was able to, you know, check the stock out and then they decided to trade the stock. But again, it was because of the news and sometimes news will move a stock with the volume if the news obviously is very, very good. But we need volume, of course, volumes, what moves it at the end of the day, right? So 
I want to say thank you to Trade Exchange. They are an amazing partner with myself and Jim. And we're so grateful that uh, we've connected with them. And uh, I would not trade without them ever. So I have to say, if you haven't heard what they're all about, uh, check out their website. And you're welcome to come to our chat room if you want to check us out. You can come do a trial, do a free trial. And when you're in the free trial, you can hear the uh, trade exchange, um, George talking to the room and giving us the real time. It's like we're on the stock market floor. So come and experience it for yourself if you're not sure. Um, but you know what? Come check it out with us if you want. And you won't have to pay for anything and you can see what it's all about. But if you don't have time to be in a chat room, which is fine, and you like to trade news, you should consider subscribing to them because this pays for itself in one trade. Amazing. So, Jim, thank you so much for that rewalk. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And this is our affiliate page right here. We have also have Trend Spider and FinViz. But, uh, yeah, trade, trade Exchange has been a great addition to the chat room, and we do have them on voice along with Vegas and I. And every once in a while, we open up the mic to the room. But we also all have a Twitter link right here. If you ever want to sign up, follow us on Twitter, please do. You can see it on the website and our personal uh, our personal um, <laughs> stock twit pages are on there and our Facebook page and all other kinds of stuff we have on here. But, and we also have the free trial. You can join up with it also. And that's right here under the uh, oh, where is it? chat room service. You can follow us, sign up to our Discord channel here on the chat room service for your two week, for your, your trial. And then if you like it, you can stick with us. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Keep our walk, WRWLK on watch. We pulled back a little bit here. Let me look where we are right now. We kind of did break that resistance level at nine bucks. I wanted to see and I'm glad we saw it. We want to keep it up here right around 866. If it pulls back, that's going to be your solid resistance point. If it breaks out this 925 and goes up to 10, we could have new highs tomorrow. And you never know how these low floats turn out. A lot of times they bounce up and sometimes they hold. I got a gut feeling that this is going to be a strong one tomorrow. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, June the 4th, 2019. And we love stocks. Night, everyone.